You know, there's this old saying that says, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's sort of true. When I tell people what I do for a living, they all look at me the same way like, well, that's great, but what else do you do? You see, most people don't believe that you can actually earn a living as a DJ. And they are mostly right because most people don't have what it takes to run a business. Let me explain. Okay, so there is this misconception out there that as a DJ, you only work nights and weekends. Like, you work Friday, you work Saturday, and then the rest, you have the rest of the week to do whatever you want. Well, as DJs, we all know that's not true. You know, contrary to what people believe, running a DJ company is a six to seven day a week thing because... Not only are you working Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, but you also have to be available during the week, during the day, Monday through Friday. That's when your clients are available. That's when the party planners are available. That's when the caterers are available. Anybody that needs to get a hold of you is going to try to get a hold of you during the day. So you have to always be working. There is no downtime just because you're a DJ. It would be fantastic if I only had to DJ on a Saturday night and I could just skate the rest of the week. But if I'm not available during the week, I don't get booked. So that's what I'm doing today. This is my gig log, day in the life of a mobile DJ trying to earn a living. So come with me. We're going to take a few trips and uh, hopefully you learn something. This is my... Uh, first official meeting today. I had to go into my office at about 9 a.m. to actually finally get our air conditioning fixed. The whole summer it's been dead. It's finally working so I can be back in the office and not sweat all day and all night. Uh, onto Victory Boulevard. This is the first meeting for me today. One of actually four meetings. Uh, I'm driving around all day. The problem with living in LA is first off you're dealing with a whole bunch of traffic all the time. Everybody is spread out. It's a big, big city. It's not like you're down the street type thing. Every meeting I go to, it takes 45 minutes to an hour to get there. And that's local. And that's only because the traffic is just so bad. But clients, clients love meetings. And it's, it's unfortunately an unavoidable thing with being a DJ, with running a company. You have to be able to get out there and see your clients. It would be great if you could just talk to people over the phone, emails, yeah, that's great, but that person-to-person -person contact, that feeling of comfort when they meet you, that sells you more than anything else out there. So don't avoid meetings. I mean, yeah, I will, I will attempt to try to sway them, maybe have them come to my office, uh, if we can do a Skype meeting or, you know, something like that, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do it. But the reality is a lot of people still want to just meet you, get a vibe from you. So it's an inevitable evil. It's something we just deal with, but it's life. So I'm at my first meeting. Uh, it's a site visit. The client is doing their event at their own home. A lot of my clients are really high-end clients and they have big big homes when they figure why should I pay a venue because I can just have it in my backyard because my backyard is biggest most venues so 
So I have to go to these clients and just check out their places, make sure it works. For the most part, it always works. But like I said before, the client likes that you're there because they feel confident that you know what it is. You've been here. You can give your recommendations and it just works better for everyone. It also gives you the opportunity to sell more products if you have them. Uplighting and and gobos and table spots, like all those things that, that normally the party planner might do. Well, if you can get in here early enough and tell them what you would do, it's going to open up a lot of more doors, which means more revenue, which means more money for your pockets. I'm not going to bring the camera in. Obviously, at somebody's house, that'd be weird, me bringing a camera in. But I'll see you in a minute. Clients late. So I'm waiting on them. I'm just doing some phone calls to just, uh, you know, not waste time just sitting around waiting. So I'm, gonna, I'm making a whole bunch of phone calls while I'm waiting. One hour later. Just finished this meeting. Uh, it went a lot longer than I expected. That was about an hour and a half meeting, uh, much longer than I wanted because I actually have to head to another meeting right now, which now I'm late to. Good family. They're still checking out other people, still checking out pricing. Um, I will tell you this. Obviously, they gave me the spiel of, you know, they're still looking at other people. And look, that's the nature of the business. There is always going to be competition. I don't go into it trying to, trying to explain why the other company is not good. That doesn't make sense. What I do is I talk about us. I talk about me and I talk about what we, what we do and how we are, are good. But if they don't book us, I'm not trying to give away the farm just to make sure that we get booked. You got to go into it knowing that they might book somebody else and it's okay. You'll fill that date with somebody else and you, there's just a, a confidence because they want to see that. If you look desperate, nobody wants to hire a desperate DJ. That, that's not going to work for you. Okay, site visit two, done. This is a humongous house, and they're doing it in their backyard. They're gonna they're gonna scaffold the pool, put a dance floor over the pool with a light up bottom. It's gonna be pretty ridiculous here. So that'll be really really cool. Now I gotta head over to Lucky Strike, which is a bowling alley nightclub. And let's see if I can make this a little lighter. So I need to make sure to see what we're bringing, if we need to bring what type of equipment before we get there so we're not over bringing and we're not wasting our time. So if you would have seen my five things you need to do before you DJ, before you go out to an, of an event, you would have known that site visits are very, very important. Hold on, I'm adjusting this thing. Yeah, site visits are very, very important. They allow you to know what you're doing. They allow you to know what you need to bring to make sure that you're bringing the right stuff and that you're prepared for whatever comes your way at the, at the event. So I like to do site visits for places I haven't been to before. I only do them once. After that, if somebody's like, hey, can you come check out the venue with me? I don't really need to go there, so I tend to try to not do it again. But at events like this, where I don't know what we're bringing, if we're bringing in a sound system, if we're bringing in lighting, I like to make sure that we're prepared. You need to treat your DJing like a nine to five job. I know what you're saying. I became a DJ so I wouldn't have to work a nine to five, but that's not true. You became a DJ because you love to DJ. No one told you you wouldn't have to work. The truth is you actually work more. At a regular nine to five, if you don't want to work, you could skate. Just do just enough to get by. But now you're your own boss. And if you don't work in this job, then you don't get paid and you don't earn. So what does earn mean? Hey, we're doing the uh, bar mitzvah Saturday morning. Uh huh. We're just trying to figure out what we need to bring versus what you have. 
Okay, who do you want to talk to? Whoever can talk to me. <laughs> right, Jim. <laughs> And then as far as dance floor is going to be here? No, nope. it's going to be predominantly right here. Okay. So this table will be moved and put on this side. There's going to be a photo booth against this wall here. Gotcha. And okay. then mainly the dance is kind of going to be. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Side. And then lighting wise, if she wanted some moving lights, we would bring that in ourselves? Yeah, we don't have moving lights, obviously. We can adjust these lights to be lighter and darker. Gotcha, gotcha. Perfect. That's what I needed. this thing really really easy they already have turntables built in right over here they got the 62 some techniques they have um, system obviously surround sound subwoofers everything you need is already here I mean there's a full-on mixer mixing board right here the only thing we need to bring in is some moving lights for the dance area which is not gonna be a problem We'll probably put them over here on the stage because it's out of the way, but it's still going to be able to shine right to the dance floor right here. So this is going to be really, really easy. I love it when it's easy. I love it when it's easy. All right, on to the next one. Now, I know this feels like a lot of work, but it's a necessity of what we do and you have to be willing to go the extra mile if you want to be successful at what this is. There's a lot of work that has to happen even before you step foot into the party. And you have to realize that it's not just about that one day that you book. You have to make sure that you are aware of all things and ahead of the game so you're not blindsided when you get to the venue and you've forgotten something or you've bought too much and you just wasted money, you've rented a van. You don't need all that stuff. So. Just checking out the venue, just checking out these things really goes a long way. And I would recommend that everybody do it. Hey boys, how are you? Hey you, how we doing? You guys hungry? You wanna eat? You wanna eat? You wanna eat? Okay, let's do this. 